Francesca. So um, this is actually uh, Dr. Franco Mano's presentation. She um, made a presentation and uh, sent me the slides. So um, all uh, full credit goes uh, to her, unfortunately. Um, she could not get on a plane because of a, a flu, I uh, understood. Um, and so um, it, uh, we will um, talk about all the comorbidities that uh, have been described or that we see in patients with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and with hypermobility spectrum disorders. For now, they have been mostly described and seen in patients with hypermobile EDS and hypermobility spectrum disorders. Um, but um, we are also starting to um, look whether we can see all of these uh, complaints in patients with other types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to learn more about the, the pathogenetic me mechanisms underlying these comorbidities also. So, and um, she started her slide with a phrase that I think she took from uh, Lara again. If you can't connect the issues, think of the connective tissues. Uh, and exactly, uh, we know that this is a multisystemic disorder and really uh, many different uh, tissues and organs uh, can be involved. Uh, in the conditions. So let's start with the heart and the vascular system. Complaints that we often hear are orthostatic intolerance or postural orthostatic uh, tachycardia syndrome, mitral valve prolapse, aortic root dilation, and uh, venous ins insufficiency. And so uh, in a person with a suspicion of Anilis Danlos syndrome, I think it's always important to, to do an uh, ultrasound uh, of the heart to look for these uh, conditions. As we have seen in the previous talks also, sometimes you could have very rare conditions that are linked to collagen abnormalities that are associated with specific cardiovascular risks. So it's important to really uh, think of this and, and, and to look for it. Um, some people also have a neurologic involvement, and this can be the peripheral nervous system, but also central nervous system. Many people suffer from headaches, which can be due to a variation in uh, cerebral spinal fluid pressure. There can be muscular problems of the, the neck muscles that can give uh, occipital headaches, migraine and neurogenic headaches. And then there is also something like the cervical medullary syndrome that can be due to uh, Arnold Chiari malformations and craniocervical or cervical instability. Pain is a very important problem, chronic pain uh, that can have a neuropathic component. And this neuropathic pain uh, can come from a degenerative disc disease, spinal instability, but more recently, there are also some clues that there are some small fiber uh, neuropathies. So actually, um, abnormalities that are seen in the, in the nerves if you look in skin biopsies. And uh, we are also exploring the pattern mechanisms uh, underlying uh, these abnormalities because for now we cannot really explain why we see these abnormalities. And that could also give us clues towards the molecular pathogenesis in certain people. You can have a cerebral venous insufficiency that may contribute to increased intracranial pressure. So um, the cervical medullary uh, syndrome, uh, symptoms that can be related to that are suboccipital or uh, headache or neck pain. Um, but uh, there can also be symptoms of, uh, of a myelopathy, so neurological symptoms uh, because of some <laughs> pressure uh, on, uh, the, on the nerves. For instance, you can have weakness, muscle weakness, changes in gait and clumsiness, spasticity, and also altered sensation, paresthesias, dysesthesias, uh, so prickling uh, of, the, of the skin, for instance, and also urinary problems with uh, urgency and uh, frequency. You can also have other symptoms, uh, such as uh, altered vision, uh, 
double vision diplopia, nystagmus, um, decreased hearing, dizziness, <coughs> vertigo, uh, balance problems, choking, problems uh, with, uh, with talking, dysarthria, dysphagia, dysautonomia, syncope or presyncope, and disordered sleep. Many, many patients with hypermobility suffer from the gastrointestinal system uh, and have gastrointestinal manifestations such as reflux and something we hear very often is irritable bowel syndrome and uh, bloating and abdominal pain, abdominal cramps, diarrhea or mixed diarrhea and constipation, sometimes even stool incontinence, uh, and then also many food intolerances. And uh, we also see, because of the, of the fragility of the connective tissues, um, hernias. I'm not going to go into detail because of the time into all uh, the examinations, but a thorough clinical examination uh, and, and, uh, and um, history taking uh, to look for these symptoms is very important. Uh, genital urinary system, uh, we can also see a lot of problems there in some people. Urgency, frequency, burning or uh, on a uh, burning sensation on urination, difficulty initiating urinary stream or emptying the bladder completely. You can have a frank incontinence. Uh, and then some people suffer from uh, repetitive urinary tract infections. Uh, that uh, can be culture negative, so that we don't find any any um, any germs. <laughs> um, and you can do urodynamic testing to look for a neurogenic bladder, for for instance. Uh, and uh, so urinary uh, examination can be uh, important. There are some forms also of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome where you can have uh, bladder diverticula because of the fragility, again, of, of the bladder, uh, the wall of the bladder. And then um, there can also be uh, signs of uh, abnormalities in the uh, immune system, um, which have been linked to something that is called mast cell activation syndrome. That is something that is only recently being recognized. And uh, again, the actual causal link with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or with hypermobility is totally unclear. But it's something that, that, that we are starting to recognize in people with uh, joint hypermobility. And we should look into more detail before we can draw any firm conclusions on, on, on the causal relationship. But people seem to have problems of um, rashes on the skin, flushing, itching, infections, uh, allergies, autoimmune disorders, uh, and history of blood clots. Um, so, um, and then on uh, an examination, you can see flushing, particularly around the neck and chest, presence of an erythema <laughs> after blood pressure is taken, uh, and uh, then history of frequent infections, and so on. But again, I must say we don't know um, what the, the causal relationship is with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and I think we need to look into more detail before we can draw conclusions on this. Muscle, musculoskeletal system, of course, a lot of musculoskeletal problems related to the joint hyperlaxity, but many patients uh, also suffer from muscle pain and spasms, which is sometimes one of the most challenging uh, aspects of, of the phenotype, because muscles are literally trying to hold the body together. So treatment strategies uh, for musculoskeletal problems are stabilization of unstable joints with braces and splints, for instance, physical therapy uh, for muscle relaxation. Uh, there are a lot of things that can be uh, um, done, like ultrasound, massage, tense, laser <coughs> therapy, and so on. Uh, dry needling, uh, you can uh, do this also, uh, use a, a tennis machine at home and then Epsom salt baths, food baths uh, for muscle relaxation, uh, physiotherapy, very important for toning and strengthening, strengthening muscles uh, to, to also improve proprioception, analgesic creams, um, 
Muscle relaxant uh, can be helpful in some patients, but in other patients it can um, it can increase the joint hyperlaxity and and uh, and uh, dislocation. So you have to really be, be be careful. And again, it's all it has to be an individualized uh, treatment um, uh, protocol for people. And beware of Botox, be, especially in the cervical region where the neck muscles are crucial to hold the head up. So if can't do that, that's a problem. So, um, and then uh, there's a lot of patient-tailored uh, interventions that you can do for all of these uh, problems and manifestations. And so that's really on an in individual basis that uh, these uh, things should be looked after and, and treated. Cardiovascular treatment strategies in, uh, include adequate salt and fluid intake if there is orthostatic intolerance. Compression, um, vêtement de compression, the compression uh, clothing can be helpful. You can have hydration tablets or capsules. Uh, this is things that are probably available, uh, sorry, in the United States and I don't know here in, uh, in France, there are alternatives probably. Um, rarely, you, there may be an arrhythmia that requires cardiovascular intervention, but I have never heard of that actually in patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or with hypermobility uh, spectrum disorders. So this is very rare in this group of conditions. Neurological intervention, so beware. It's a very rare uh, manifestation, uh, but uh, beware of uh, the, the Chiari malformation. Uh, if that is present and there are signs of, uh, of, uh, um, of d diplopia, for instance, then uh, a neurosurgeon uh, should uh, treat this. If there is a neurogenic bladder, urodynamic studies could be needed. Um, then you can have a collar for the neck. Uh, and uh, okay, um, if there is central pain sensitization, then you could have uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. So you can see, you see, it's very diverse, and there is very diverse uh, management strategies that are really uh, need to be individualized. Many people suffer from instability of uh, the temporomandibular joints and have uh, pain uh, because of that, also uh, head, uh, headaches, etc., and pain in the neck. So that's also something that should be thought of. Gastrointestinal interventions can include prokinetic drugs uh, that could help if motility studies show that there is a gastroparesis or, a low, of, or low bowel uh, mobility. If there is a lot of um, diarrhea, then consider the mast cell protocol. And I really cannot give too much uh, details about this protocol because this is also <coughs> something that's uh, especially available in uh, the United States. But Claire put in a slide on the mast cell protocol, so I'll show it to you. Um, if the patient is on opiate uh, medication, consider use of bowel-specific opiate antagonists because that can give uh, constipation, so we should be aware of that also. And the medi the, 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 the many people take a lot of, of painkillers and, and other medication that can also uh, bring a lot of uh, side effects and, and can com make the, the the clinical presentation more complex, so uh, we have to take that into account also, and minimize the use of proton pump in inhibitors. For urological interventions, there, for instance, if there is pelvic floor uh, dysfunction, physiotherapy again can uh, be helpful. Uh, and then neurosurgical procedures if there is uh, more complex involvement. Here you can see the mast cell protocol. I really don't know anything about this. Uh, so this is, is, is uh, a uh, uh, medication protocol uh, that uh, would intervene with uh, release of, of histamines, I think, by uh, the mast cells, and that could um, that could um, decrease the the problems of, of uh, flushing and uh, hives and rashes, uh, etc. But I have no experience with this. And again, I I would like to stress that we don't know uh, about the relationship between mast cell activation syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And then coping, of course, there are also a lot of um, 
therapies that uh, that are available that uh, that will help you to cope with chronic uh, pain such as cognitive behavioral therapy mindfulness based stress reduction um, and I would also like uh, to stress uh, the importance of patient support groups that make available also treatment uh, information on, on, on treatment protocols, etc. And exercise is, is also very important. Immobilization is really very uh, nefast for uh, an EDS body, I would think. So again, we've heard this, a multidisciplinary evaluation and management uh, strategy is really essential, uh, especially for patients with severe and unusual manifestations in multiple <laughs> organs, and we really have to look for all these manifestations and try to treat them as good as possible. Unfortunately, uh, it's still very difficult uh, sometimes uh, to find a good uh, protocol and a good solution uh, for all these uh, manifestations. But at least uh, we recognize that uh, this can be part uh, of the phenotype and we have to look into more detail into the causal relationships uh, um, between all these symptoms. And with this, I think Claire wants to thank <laughs> the Ilas Danlos Syndrome Society and the patients and uh, <laughs> families. Thank you very much. Thank you.